Hello friends, um, it's good to see you. I am Cassandra Raven and this is Max Raven. Hello everybody. Uh, we are live on Facebook Raven Mystic page, our page over on Facebook. If you're watching this anywhere else, it's going to be um, a little bit strange to you. We'll be reading people's comments and questions and things like that. So if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, uh, bear in mind that this is a live Facebook broadcast. Um, so. Where are we? There's a question. Well, we're in Woodchester Park. Uh, we're about a 15 or so minute walk from our home. Uh, and we're here to do a little bit of exploring in the woods. Um, it's completely pitch black here. There is no light pollution. <laughs> That's thing. Um, uh, the stars are amazing. I'm just going to check. <laughs> I, and my torch has just broken, which is going to be a royal pain. Um, <laughs> you can use mine, it's okay. Thank you, dear. So we're going to show you a place that's reasonably well hidden. Uh, you, if you ever come to Woodchester Park, you might hear about it, but a lot of people tend to miss it. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly where it is yet. Um, we're going to walk down to it and we'll see what you guys think. Um, tonight we're going to do a few interesting things. Um, we're going to talk to you about incense, broomsticks, um, folklore as usual, and more witchy items. <laughs> we're also going to see what kind of energies we can tune into here while we're here. Um, as we usually do, we like to sense um, energies and see what we can pick up on. Um, this particular part of the valley is, is quite high up, hence why we're able to get on the internet. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to stick with you guys, hopefully you'll be able to see us um, we're just about to go down a little slope um, towards where we're heading to tonight um, and hopefully you guys can um, remain with us as we do so. If not, we'll come back up to this part um, and, and broadcast from here instead. Hi Kay, great to see you. Thank you so much for watching. Hi Craig as well, good to see you. And Sal, great to see you too. Um, so it took us about 15 minutes to walk from home to here. Um, although I have to say we were going at quite a pace and realized how incredibly <laughs> unfit we are at going up a hill I was which trying is to run right to keep there. up with my little legs but there we go um, and we picked up a few energies along the way it's an interesting thing that spirits um, are often interested in in what you're doing especially if you're the only people around um, and if you're the only ones kind of walking through um, a, a valley, we've got the entire valley to ourselves I think, oh, it's just us and the animals and the spirits that are here um, they tend to be quite interested in, in what you're doing they show an interest, don't they? they? Do. Um, um, so it's been be interesting so seeing, far we've been walking along and seeing quite a few energies actually on the path Yeah. Uh, all from different time periods as well yeah. So. Um, also I have to point out yeah. that um, today is a bit of a special day if you are um, of a certain persuasion um, it is Crowley Mass if you are um, a fan of Alistair Crowley, or you know about Alistair Crowley, um, then you will know that today is his birthday, um, and affectionately today is known as Crowley Mass. It's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek um, day to celebrate Alistair Crowley, um, but this particular location, we know that he visited here in 1895. Um, and this is something that we're going to talk more about um, on one of the other videos that we do, um, pertaining to the area where we are. I think we'll go into more detail about that and the other stories that are connected to uh, the park where we are as well another time. Uh, but today is Crowley Mass and knowing that he has walked on this ground, that he has been here, um, is quite an exciting thing. It's just one of those things that we like to kind of, we kind of realised during the day that hey it's Crowley Mass today, it'll be cool to go out and uh, acknowledge that. Um, and uh, see what kind of energies we get coming forward as well. But that is certainly something that we're going to talk more about in the future. Um, and we're going to touch on uh, some of the symbology um, and some of the, the teachings and ideas behind uh, some of the occult systems that, that he taught and that he was into as well and how that connects in with the location that we're at. We'll do that another time. That'll be a, a good one to get our teeth into. Mm. Um, but for now, we're going to head down that spooky path behind us. Thank God my um, torch has started working again. Has it started working It again? has started okay. working again. So I think I'll uh, turn the camera around so that you guys can see where we're going. Um, let us know, as usual guys, any energies that you're picking up on, anything that you guys can sense. 
Um, anything that you're feeling at all as we go, let us know. I lead the way. Yeah. So okay, if anything so jumps out first. and tries to eat us. It'll eat you first. Good. I can't run faster than you, it's fine. <laughs> I can't run at all. There's no chance of me running anywhere. Okay, so there's lots of purple and incense in the air. It will be in a minute, especially. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna burn a bit of incense down here. Um, so we're just heading down this little pathway here. Um, you might lose us as we go down. Let's, let's um, hope we're, we're high enough to do it, and we won't be that covered up. We're going yeah. through uh, here. We've got beech trees. Um, boxes, um, box the type of tree, not box as in cardboard box. <laughs> um, some lovely old oak trees. I don't know if you guys can see it, if the camera's going to reach that far. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, yeah. So watch out, coming through here, there's a few um, old cobblestones. Okay. And now we're. And now we're just about to go down this completely overgrown tunnel and see what it takes us to. Craig says it's very Blair Witch. <laughs> I have blown my nose, we should be <laughs> Kay says be careful guys, no falling over. We'll do our best not to fall over. That's why I'm going first, she gets a soft, soft landing. That's right, I need a soft okay, landing. Right. Uh, here we've got to come to the stairs, so okay. watch out. Give the guys another little look around as we go. It's quite, quite closed in. Do you hear that in the bushes? Yes, I can hear that in the bushes. What is it, Max? I have no idea. It could be a badger. It could also be the big cat that's actually been on the news that's in the park. Yes, thank you for that. That's okay, yeah. Yes, let's talk about that in a minute. Let's, um, let's just get to where we're going first. Or I fall over as well. Okay. Right, ah, here we are. Good. Right. Okay, we've pretty much made it. Watch out for the roof. Ah, you can see home. Sorry, guys, for being um, a little bit wobbly with the camera there, but here we are. So, just to show you guys, let's look at this magnificent tree first. I'm just going to put my scarf there, out of the way. Um, Max, tell us a little bit about this tree. This tree. This type of tree. This, this tree is a new tree. tree. Uh, I mentioned this on our last live, uh, that yew trees are synonymous with death and the underworld. Um, they are some of the most long-lived trees um, that are around. Uh, only The only ones that are more, uh, have a lot more longevity are some very rare ones that grow in the deeps of the Sahara. But these trees can be Let's multiple Sorry. thousands I'm not going to go over the edge. Multiple thousands of years old. Um, every part of the tree is poisonous, apart from the flesh of the berries. Is so, it really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Why did someone take off? You yeah. have just turned your torch off. Um, so, magically, this tree is fantastic. Um, so, for any rituals communing with the underworld, the other side, um, death, rebirth. Um, it's a fantastic tree to use, uh, to use its wood and its bark, um, leaves and berries. Um, but I will say one thing, if you do end up using any part of a tree or any part of uh, nature for magic, ritual, anything like that, um, don't take more than you need. Don't unnecessarily damage the plant, tree, wildlife in the area. And always ask permission first. Mm -hmm. um, Traditionally, someone might leave an offering, uh, say a, a small coin. Um, a really traditional one is, say, bread, honey, and ale. Um, those are always very good ones to do. Um, so that's a, an offering from yourself to the tree uh, or energies of that area. Um, depending on how much you want to work with the tree, um, you can, if you're say using it to make um, say a wand or a staff or a tool that you're going to actually use magically, um, some people say it's worthwhile to actually build up a relationship with that um, that plant or tree. 
Right, um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Establish a relationship. Same with spirits. In fact, any energies that you're that you're hoping to work with, the idea is to establish a relationship with those energies. Which is why we um, do rituals. We um, we do things on a on a regular basis, and it's to establish that connection. So, people, you know, on on the kind of lightest sort of surface um, of it. Sorry, there we go. Um, you can you can kind of look at meditation. Some people meditate to connect with their guides and try to establish a connection with their spirit guides. Once you've got that connection, then you know each other. You're you're able to ask for help. You're able to um, commune uh, with your guide. On a similar note, if you're uh, communicating with spirits, um, energies uh, higher up energies that are uh, working with you on a ritualistic uh, sense as well you want to be able to establish a relationship with those energies as well um, when I'm teaching Kabbalah I teach my students to establish a connection um, with Archangel energies um, that's one of the first things that I teach is to establish a connection with the Archangels and establish a protection with them then they're, they're there to help you they're there to protect you they're there to, to fight on your side um, and it's good to get those energies working alongside you the same with elemental energies as well we should do a, a show about those too there's a lot of confusion about those so we should do yes, a show we, about we that should too definitely <laughs> clear up all the um Clear up all the nonsense, that's nonsense the, yes, the untruths that's that, are, that are out there about that kind of thing. So establishing a connection with nature, a relationship with nature and a relationship with spirits is very important. Um, and, you know, if you if you s just turn up somewhere and expect them to do your bidding and all the rest of it, well, good luck with that. Um, but however, if you establish a relationship, uh, that's when they're more likely to be on your side and work with you. Okay. Thank you, Ollie. It's good to see you. Uh, Merry Crowleymas to you, my and friend. Old, um, um, now, uh, how do you say that? Are you going to have to tell us how you say that? Old Tico? Jico? Tico. Tico. <laughs> You'll I, have to tell us how to pronounce I'll, that. I'll let we you will do look this one because this will be funny. We will look that <laughs> up. Um, yeah, that sounds like it's going to be um, an I interesting think, thing to see. Um, Ollie, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that uh, that's one of the oldest trees in the world, and that's the one that's in the desert. Um, that's been dated to something ridiculous like 10,000 years old. Um, Ooh, I might okay. have that completely wrong. Uh, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, Ollie. Cool. Um, um, Kay also said... Oh, that's... Sorry, I've just seen a... What is that light over there, then? Which light? That orange one. That orange light, that's the mansion. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um... Sorry, I got distracted there by an orange light shining through the trees. Uh, Case is a, a fairy tree, I think she said. Um, so, so can we talk about this? This is something that we've we've taught. It's great. We've taught yeah. this to, to Max's daughter. She's nine, um, and every time she sees a fairy tree now, she she does she, the thing. Yeah. So, explain that then. So, the shape okay. of the tree here okay. is is relevant. Right. I hope okay. you guys um, can see right. that. Right. I'll move my head out of the way. So what we have here, we have a tree that's split uh, with two uh, definitive, basically, trees coming off the same root base. Um, the whole idea of, I mentioned it briefly before, uh, of things betwixt, between those spaces which are neither here nor there, that space between the tree is, um, in the old faith, and old uh, traditions, would be viewed as a fairy portal. Um, now, when you say fairy, everyone will conjure up the idea of, oh, it's cute and fluffy. <laughs> no, it isn't. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's another way of talking about the energies that are around. Um, for something like that, you can, at these places, ask for the aid and the help of um, the fae or fairies or however you want to refer to them. Um, and what I have taught my daughter to do, um, that she, if she has a, a goal she wants to achieve or something she wants um, to send positive energy out to anywhere, uh, that if we're walking along through the woods and she finds one of these trees, uh, to um, place her hands on each side of the tree, so one either side, and then say their, her wish, her um, her goal through the tree, uh, so symbolically asking the other side for help, and then to step through from the reality where that isn't possible to the one where it is, and at the same time leaving some sort of gift, so uh, usually say a small coin or something like that as a, a thank you mm. to the energies. 
Um, mm. I have even heard stories of people um, doing it for arrogant reasons um, and literally getting kicked up the bum and being sent rolling down a hill uh, when doing it. Rather like the Whomping Willow. From a a bit Potter. like the Whomping Willow okay. is a really good way of putting it. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't want that to happen. But, um, but there we go. So yeah. I, I didn't actually... Uh, didn't think of that before we came, but it's a nice extra little thing to, to have there. We, we have been what here have before. Um, Abby, hello. Good hello, to see Abby. you. Richard, hello. Hi from, hi from the US. Good to see you. Hi. How's it going hello. over there? I hope you're well. Um, so we are at um, this. Let's have a look at the bench then, shall we? Now, I'm on the edge of a... You're not that far off, so if I hold you... It's okay. okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let's turn the good? camera around. Yeah. Are you sure we're good? <laughs> yeah. So let's turn the light round as well. Okay, so we have um, a lovely stone bench here. We should probably move our, move, move your bag. A lovely stone bench. A lovely now. stone bench that we've dumped all our things on. Here we are. Right. So a beautiful stone bench. Now I'm. I will have to. Co I will put a comment on this video with the correct t uh, century this is from. It's either sixteenth or 17th century this bench mm -hmm. so this predates um, all the other buildings in the park um, that are still standing um, and in the daytime this has got a fantastic view over the entire valley it has it's a shame that uh, we always say it we're here in the dark and you guys aren't able to see if we had a super brilliant torch you would have an amazing view and we'd have some very annoyed um, farmers yes <laughs> No, Max, the mansion is down that way. Yeah. No, the light I saw was over there. Oh, okay, you're probably seeing one of the farms at oh, the top. Oh, okay. All right, then, that's fine. Okay. okay. Right, okay, so. let's turn this around again. Right, so the, the, our purpose for being here tonight... If you um, stand there, look pretty and entertain, I mm -hmm. will begin the process of causing okay. mischief. You're going to put that stuff on the bench, are you? Yes. Okay. So guys, how are you feeling about where we are? What are you picking up on? What are you sensing? Well, as I said earlier, we've brought some spirits with us that kind of joined us as we were walking along the path um, on our way here. We had to climb a bit of a steep uh, hill through the woods. Um, and as we were doing that, we were kind of picking up spirits uh, that had decided to kind of tag along with us and join us. Um, so we've got a few energies that are with us. We're going to talk to you guys about incense, um, a little bit about how it's, how it's made, the kinds of ingredients that you can use in incense, and how to use it as well. We thought we'd do a little how-to um, for this. And also we're going to talk about broomsticks and the folklore that surrounds uh, broomsticks and um, all of that kind of stuff too. So, Max is just preparing himself. Can I film what you're doing now? Is that okay if we have a look at what you're... No, you can. What you're doing? So, okay. I'll turn the okay. camera on again. Hi, Emma. Good to see you. Hi, Brian. Uh, the sound of drums. Okay, that's interesting. Brilliant. It's an interesting <laughs> one. Hi, Cherylee. great to see you. Okay, so Max is just setting up um, some things here. Can you explain to us what you're doing here, please, Okay. Max? Let's take the torch out of me now. Um, so what we're doing here, um, we are, we've got our central flame, uh, although it's not the most impressive one. I've had to try and find something that's actually windproof. Um, we have our ritual bell, uh, which we'll explain a little bit when we set it up. We have also our cauldron. Let's have a look at that guy, because that's so cute. It's got a witch on it. Thank you very much, Harry. Harry bought us that, or found us that, um, which I think is fab. And you've got... It's got, yeah, it's got three witches on one side. No, or two, two witches. Two witches. On two one. witches. Clearly I'm the third. Three witches. You're the, you're, you're the third witch. <laughs> a bit um, like a and in the jar? In the we jar. Have... Now, in the jar, we have what is known as a loose incense blend. Uh, a lot of people will have come across uh, incense sticks, uh, which are usually mass produced um, and usually have some binding agents to, in them, which actually makes them stick to the stick. Um, this is a very traditional way of making incense. Um, I actually made this today. Um, it would be, you would select your incense, uh, sorry, you would select your herbs, uh, resins, uh, for the uh, particular blend that you were producing. 
uh, grind them in a pestle and mortar, or if they're fresh herbs, uh, chop them up. Um, and then you would burn them upon a charcoal disc. Now this particular blend is, shall we, we'll, we'll call it a trick-or-treat blend. Okay, um, that's good, I like that. It's so, Holly, Holly's online. Hi Holly, great to see you. Thank you for watching, also in the States. Um, fabulous. So, uh, Max is just uh, sorting out his charcoal disc there. He's going to pop that in the little cauldron and, um, and light one side of it. What happens with these charcoal discs is they spark a little bit um, at first. And I then, was clever enough to bring that. It's brilliant. And then, um, <laughs> Sorry. And then they heat up. They get very, very hot. Um, now, before you do that, before you do that. I'm, before, I'm, I'm not doing okay. anything. I'm behaving myself. <laughs> um, we've produced some uh, new interesting little products that we've just put on the website today ravenmysticshop.com um, and some of the uh, products that we're making require um, putting some of the incense blend that we've made that comes with the pack it comes in the product that you buy um, it requires putting that incense onto a charcoal disc and, and burning it so what we wanted to do today was to show you guys the process of that and how it works because a lot of people have been uh, kind of questioning how do I do this, how do I use the incense, um, I've never used a charcoal disc before, how do you do that? Um, uh, so in the pack that we've produced the charcoal disc is included in the little box um, and, the <laughs> and the incense that is pre-blended, the incense that, that Max has blended is also in there as well. Um, and some of the uh, products that we've made are Halloween related, yes. sewing related, um, or Hallows uh, things. And we've produced a blend uh, for the purpose of um, All Hallows Eve and the Halloween candles that we've pr been producing as well. Um, and what we've done is we've basically taken the blend um, that we've <coughs> put onto uh, some of the products that we've produced over the last week that have just gone onto the website and we've mixed it together. So we, we've um, blended, there, there's two different blends. There is trick. the trick <laughs> uh, and there is also treat. Um, <clears throat> what I've done, I've blended these two together and given them, shall we say, go faster stripes. <laughs> um, so That's basically uh, the ones that if any of you guys do end up with them, it will be a very, it will be a safer version. Um, as it were. I don't want to make it sound like it's dangerous, but um, of course working with any en any energy, um, you have to be careful with what you're doing. Of course you do. Um, yeah. So with with this, it's uh, one that uh, should be interesting and should bring forward some very interesting energies. Yeah, we'll see how we go with that. Let me just uh, catch up the guys that have just tuned in. So Emma, um, we are in Woodchester Park and we're at um, a spot that's really, really high up on the side of the valley. Um, and uh, there's a bench here, um, a stone bench, which uh, we know dates from either the 16th or 17th century. Am I right with that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and it's really a kind of a viewing platform. There's a beautiful um, uh, yew, tree. yew tree here as well, um, just behind the bench. And we've spoken a little bit about um, the idea of fairy trees and that kind of thing. Um, and the yew. And if you come here during the day, you have a fantastic view over the valley. Um, and you are able to see Woodchester Mansion from this point of view as well if you come during the day unfortunately we can't show you that now because it's dark um gail says she can hear marching drummers you're not the first person to say drummers um that's interesting isn't it that is fantastic yeah, now fantastic. Uh, one of the ideas uh, behind sort of the trick or treat is to um actually um commune with the spirits of the dead the um, All Hallows is the time of the year when the veil is at its thinnest. So this is a perfect time to commune with spirits, both those of loved ones that have passed, uh, guides, uh, masters, and the spirits that are in the place in the place that you're in. That's right. Yeah, it's also Crowley Mass. You guys that are just catching up, um, it's Alistair Crowley's birthday, um, and anybody that that follows the teachings of Alistair Crowley. Um, we, we have a celebration that we call Crowley Mass, it's a bit tongue in cheek, it's, it's a celebration of his birthday um, and Alistair Crowley did visit here in uh, 1895, um, so we are on a spot where he would have walked, so we like that, we, we kind of thought we'd tie that in as well. Um, so, let's film okay. what you're doing there then, shall okay. we? Let's turn <coughs> the camera around so we can show you guys. Okay, uh, flip the light round as well. Yeah. 
There we go. Right. Okay, so for anyone who ends up with one of these kits, uh, what I have here, because I have such a deep uh, windproof container, I'm actually using a pair of pliers just to hold it. Um, if when you do light these, they will fizzle and they will crack and they can get very, very hot. So you can light this by placing it into a suitable container first and then lighting it with a match or a lighter. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's an equally good way to do it. So if you've got a box of matches and you've got a, a suitable container to pop this in, these um, charcoal discs get extremely hot. So if, you, if you're thinking about putting it on a dinner plate or something like that, it will probably crack. So it use needs to be a, a suitable container for it, so, so it's got to be really heat proof. I would say if you've got a say a metal tea light holder uh, and say a piece of wood, a uh, solid wooden chopping board that you don't mind in case it gets singed or anything like that, something like that will be the safest bet. We happen to have a cauldron, um, but in the past I tend to have used a uh, actually a metal tea light holder which had um, some legs on it which kept it off uh, all the surface and that was always fine. So never just put it down on any flammable surface yeah it's, so it really does get really hot so now okay. that's the health and safety stuff out of the way let's <laughs> burn things <laughs> okay so here's what happens when you oh, this doesn't damage my phone when you first light it it will start to kind of crackle a little bit once it takes there we go yeah, i think you can see the uh the little sparks coming off it there that's perfectly normal doesn't mean it's going to explode <laughs> And it just does that for a little while until it kind of takes it takes the heat. Um, and of course you can he see the heat spreading there across the charcoal disc. What you want to do before you put your incense on is to make sure that the whole surface of the disc is heated all the way through really. Um, and you can tell, you can see the heat spreading there. Okay. There we go now. <coughs> Apparently Harry, Harry's online watching. Harry, thank you very much for this little cauldron. We did we did um, give you a little heads up earlier, gave you a little thank you for that. We have to thank Harry for that, that marvellous gift. Okay, now for those of you that have done ritual work before and for those of you that haven't, uh, it is tradition uh, or traditional to uh, ring a bell at the opening of any ritual, which is why we have this lovely thing here. Um, so what we're going to do, before we place this trick-or-treat incense on, we're going to ring this bell three times, and that is done to basically to sound your intentions that I am now working spiritually, um, and to get the attention of the spirits in the area. This is also one of those things that if you do it regularly, uh, the spirits will take note. You know, every time it, it follows then, every time there's a bell that rings three times, uh, they will, you know, they'll turn up because it's a signal to them that, that you're working and that you need their assistance or that you need their protection. Max is laughing because last year, or was it the year before? Last I'm not year. sure. There was, there was a Shakespeare production um, just outside of our house and I was trying to sleep before going to work. Um, uh, I was working on a ghost hunt that night and I was trying to sleep during the day and this Shakespeare production was going on and during the production they rang a bell three times um, and my bed was suddenly surrounded with <laughs> all the spirits that usually turn up when I'm doing any kind of ritual. And I just, I think Max just heard me say, go away. It's, it's not for you, bugger it's off. It's not for you, go away. <laughs> not now, come back later. Um, so yes, so ringing a bell three times, uh, be warned about that. Wherever you are and somebody rings a bell three times, <laughs> it means that they'll all turn up. Um, but it's a good thing, really. It's good. Okay. Right. And now we're going to pop the incense on. So you can see in there, we've got a, where are we? There we go. Uh, we've got a blend of herbs in there. There's a variety of different ones in there. Um, when I put some on, I will explain a little bit what's in there. It's interesting, the first time we've actually burnt this. Oh, that smells good. Um, now, within this blend, uh, we have a variety of different herbs and plants. Um, we have frankincense, we have storax, uh, we have damiana, we have wormwood, um, and lots of other things. Um, so 
each one of these uh, plants or resins has their own energy, their own vibration, their own correspondences. So they can be combined in millions of different ways. Um, so frankincense, for example, is a solar um, resin. Um, you can use it for sun, you can use it for cleansing, exorcism, things of that nature. Storax, it's one of my favourite smells out of my uh, entire apothecary. Um, it's a fantastic one that relates to the underworld, um, uh, things like the moon and things like that. Um, another one of my favourite ones, uh, actually two, not two nice ones that go together, you've got um, bay leaves. Same ordinary ones you'd use in your cooking. Uh, now, in, um, in Roman belief and Greek belief, um, the victorious would be crowned with a crown of bay leaves. Um, henbane, on the other hand, is what the fallen would be crowned with in the underworld. So a very interesting blend uh, that you could do is, say, um, bay, henbane, storax and frankincense. Because then you would have a balance between both uh, positive, negative, solar and lunar. Love that. I love that. So also, um, going alongside the idea of uh, creating um, an incense blend, and you touched on very briefly their correspondences. Let's, let's talk about those really, really briefly. That's a, a massive subject um, that I could get into and talk, talk about for hours and hours. Um, but basically, uh, correspondences, for, for the way that I work, I work very closely with the Tree of Life, um, the Kabbalist.